Parabolic softboxes. What a load of marketing bullshit. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the reasons why and show you a side-by-side -side comparison against a conventional softbox. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. It never ceases to amaze me how certain products are created purely for marketing reasons, when in fact they have no physical or practical advantage whatsoever over existing products. Parabolic softboxes are a perfect example. This is a product that has hijacked the word parabolic from parabolic reflectors and merged it with the word softbox to make a mockery of the laws of physics. They take up to three times more space in your studio than necessary, they're much heavier and more cumbersome, and they don't deliver anything different. Before I show you my video comparing a parabolic softbox to conventional softboxes, let's explore the basic physics. The purpose of a softbox is to create a large and as homogeneous light source as possible. Homogeneous meaning that the entire front surface of the softbox should be evenly illuminated as possible. To do this, the light needs to be diffused and scattered around inside the softbox as best as possible so that by the time it reaches the final diffuser, it is homogeneous, creating broad soft light. The light that is then emitted from the front of the softbox will travel in multiple directions from multiple angles without any point being brighter than another. So if that is the purpose of a softbox, why on earth would you want to utilize a parabolic design that directs and collimates light that you can then diffuse in all directions anyway? It's basically completely unnecessary. So my first thought was that surely these things must have another advantage, maybe with the front diffuser removed, maybe providing you a giant beauty dish look instead. Well, let's take a look at my tests. So this is the Octobox 150 centimeter, which I'd say is a sort of benchmark softbox, good all rounder. This is uh, the one we're gonna use to do the comparison. Okay, now we'll test without uh, the front diffuser and then without the middle diffuser. Now let's get rid of the middle diffuser. So we've taken uh, another two thirds of an f-stop off for the removal of the front diffuser. So a parabolic softbox. Um, this one's also 150 centimeters wide. It's in the same position. The first thing I noticed is how cumbersome and heavy it is to get in position compared to a uh, normal Octa 150. I mean, look at all the extra depth just because they needed to call it a parabolic for marketing reasons. And that makes it so much heavier. There's no way I could have got it on that giraffe boom without it tipping over with a load of sandbags, it would have been impossible to manage. It's barely uh, able to lock the lighting bracket to stop it bending down on its own weight. So we'll see if it's any better as a soft box, which I can't see how the physics would allow it to be. And then we'll do the same with the front diffusion off and the inner diffusion off to see if there's differences there. Now, as you can see, because it's not on a giraffe boom, it's actually in my way now. Now, the softbox image looks exactly the same as that softbox. So there's absolutely no reason for it to have this huge parabolic shape and depth and weight to it to be used as a softbox. Complete marketing gimmick. Let's hope it does something a little bit more useful without the diffusion on. So I've dropped the power of the light and now no front diffuser. Let's now remove the inner diffuser. Okay, I've turned the light down a little bit more 
and now with no diffusers, so you have the bare bulb plus the parabolic reflector. Remember, true parabolic lights and reflectors, the light should be facing inwards on a rod that you can move in and out to the desired focus point of the light. As it is right now, it's pretty much like using a giant P70, so I'm expecting the light will be a little bit crisper uh, than the version we did bare bulb with the Octobox. In this first image, you can see that the Octobox 150 and the Parabolic Softbox are identical in results when all the diffusion layers are in place. The shadows under the chin, the highlights on the body, and the specularity all remain exactly the same. Again, on the close-up, you can see that the shadows under the chin, the nose, and everything remain identical. On the dress, the overall sparkle, tonal range also remains the same on both modifiers. With the front diffusion removed, I would have expected to see a difference. Again, on the Parabolic Softbox and the Octobox 150, with the front diffuser removed, there is no difference. Again, that can be seen more clearly in the close-up image here. And on the dress, no change. With no diffusion at all, that is with the front diffuser and the internal diffuser removed, we can see a slight difference. The parabolic softbox is collimating the light and creating a higher contrast on the face, which would be beneficial. However, you will see shortly how I can create the same lighting effect in a less cumbersome form. On the close-up on the dress, we can see that the parabolic softbox with no diffusion at all is crisper and more contrasty than the Octobox 150 with no diffusion at all. But again, later in this video, I'll show you another way of achieving the same result. So it's clear to see from those results that in a full softbox configuration, there was no advantage. But unfortunately, there was a huge size, weight and cumbersome in handling disadvantage. With the front diffuser removed, there was also no difference between them either, which was surprising as I thought that might have been where it had the edge. And it was only with both diffusers removed that the parabolic softbox became a parabolic reflector, but with a forward facing light, much like a giant P70 or standard reflector. A proper parabolic reflector has an inward facing light. However, with no diffusers, it did provide a pleasant, crisp light with good texture. But I was actually able to replicate that lighting effect fairly easily by using a bare bulb studio light facing the wrong way into a deep focus umbrella. Again, providing me with much less weight and the ability to mount it easily onto my giraffe boom. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison, and you can see that there's not a great deal of difference at all. Here, by using the Focus 110 umbrella with a studio light the incorrect way round, I'm able to achieve a very similar result to the parabolic softbox with no diffusion at all. In fact, the Focus 110 umbrella is actually crisper and the light more contrasty on the face than the parabolic softbox. In summary, using the word parabolic and softboxes together just doesn't make any sense, as it's completely paradoxical. And any claims by manufacturers that you can somehow benefit from collimating the light and then diffusing it in all directions just goes against the laws of physics and is just nonsense. Yes, you can make a parabolic reflector into a softbox which is useful, but don't market a softbox as being parabolic just for it to sound cool. Now, of course, the results here are a test on one generic brand, but having analyzed the design and how other brand designs are similar, I cannot expect the physics to be any different. But if you're a brand who believes you have somehow circumnavigated the laws of physics or your product does something differently, then feel free to send me your product to put it to the test. Finally, and to avoid confusion, 
actual parabolic modifiers and reflectors can, of course, be hugely beneficial in creating striking results. And in some of our next videos, I'll be comparing different parabolic modifiers as well as showing you something special that I made myself. Thanks very much for watching. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Carl to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you.